Look at that. Look at all this hair. Gotta be careful, I can take off my top layer of skin really fast. Look at this, razor sharp. Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Dan, you're watching Guns and Guitars, the channel that's all about helping you have the most amount of fun for the least amount of money. Now, one of the ways that I save a ton of money is by buying my knives used and putting a razor edge on them myself. Now, I save tons of money. I usually get my knives for less than half the price just because the previous owner didn't know how to keep it sharp. So I'm gonna show you today my favorite budget-friendly method for putting a razor sharp edge on a knife and keeping it that way. And that's the Lansky Multi-Angle Sharpening System. So if you're interested in saving a boatload of money just because you can buy knives used for half the price and put a wicked edge on it yourself, stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. All right guys, now before we get started, if you haven't seen it yet, check out that video up there on why your knives are not getting sharp in the first place, okay? In that video, I have a great explanation on what you're trying to accomplish and why. And once you understand the what and the why, the how comes much more naturally. And the how is what we're gonna be working on in this video. Now, there are a few reasons why I feel like the Lansky Multi-Angle Sharpening System is the best sharpening system. And that's one, because it's affordable, okay? The starter pack starts at about $25, so you'll make your money back double the first time you buy a quality blade used. Two, it's very safe, and this is important for beginner knife sharpeners because not all freehand knife sharpening systems are safe, but if you use this one the way it's intended, the way I'm gonna show you in this video, there's no way you can hurt yourself. Three, it's absolutely foolproof. And again, this is awesome for beginners, okay? If you follow the steps that I'm gonna show you, you can't screw this up. And lastly, it's extremely versatile and customizable, okay? You can add lots of different stones to this set to do a lot of different things, like sharpening serrated edges, which I'll show you in a future video, or you can polish your bevel with this system. You can reprofile your bevel with this system. And if you don't understand that terminology, again, check out that video that I made last week. But this system is absolutely awesome. You just can't go wrong with it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how I get perfect razor sharp edges with this system. Now I love this system because for about $25 you have everything that you need to get a wicked sharp edge on your knife. You've got your coarse, medium, and fine grit stones. You've got honing oil. This is for cleaning your stones so that they stay nice and clean and productive. And then it also comes with these rods and this multi-angle clamp. Now, this thing is absolutely genius because it will guide you at preset angles of 17, 20, 25, and 30 degrees. Just about every knife from the factory will be pre-ground to one of those angles. But the real genius thing is that as these rods are guiding your preset perfect angle, once you finish one side of the blade, you just flip the clamp over and you're ready to do the other side. I also added on the ultra fine hone that really helps us get a nice mirror polished edge. And then I also added on the extra coarse diamond hone and that is very necessary for reprofiling either a ruined bevel or changing the degree of angle. So like I said, a factory knife will come from the factory with one of these preset angles, but if you wanna change it to something else, having an extra coarse diamond hone is very necessary. So now I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how I go from an extremely dull blade to an extremely razor sharp blade. See, I've got somewhat hairy arms and I drag this along here and you can see that I'm really pressing hard down into my skin and it is not taking any hairs along with it, not even a little bit. So the first thing you're gonna do is add your knife to your Lansky clamp, okay? And you want to clamp it just on the very edge of that primary bevel and you want it to be as centered as possible on your cutting edge. Now I would move this closer, but you can see that I actually have another bevel right there on top because of this particular blade design. So I'm gonna go right on the edge of that, and then you're gonna tighten down this screw right here, and it doesn't have to be tight, you can just use your fingernail. And then you're really gonna tighten it down with this little red thumb screw right here. So you can see we're clamped down tight just above that primary bevel. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna check what angle your bevel is at. Now the best way to do this is to just take a Sharpie and mark right on the edge of that bevel, something like that. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fine grit hone and we're gonna start on the shallowest setting, 17 degrees, okay? And we're just gonna go right across it like that, very lightly, and you can see I didn't take off any of that marker, only just along the very tip top, so that's too shallow. So we'll go up to the 20 degree. All right, and you can see 20 degrees got rid of the majority of that black line. The only bit of that black line that's left 
is on the apex that has rounded over. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be fixing right now. I already knew that this was at a 20 degree bevel because that is my favorite bevel, so I profile all of my knives for a 20 degree bevel. But you'll wanna go ahead and double check on the other side because if you got this knife directly from the factory and you've never sharpened it yourself, you cannot assume that both sides of the knife are gonna have the same angle on the bevel. So you just go over to the other side and again, starting shallow, Okay, didn't take away any of the marker there. And again, that actually took away all of it. So now what I like to do is mark that bevel again, the whole length of the knife blade. Okay, this will let us know when we have ground off all the way to the apex of our blade. And we'll do that on both sides. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with my extra coarse diamond honed. And again, this is just assuming that this was a factory knife and I needed to profile to the angle that I wanted. You don't necessarily need to do this every time. In fact, most of the time you can actually start with your medium grit. You can just do your medium, fine, and then if you like, ultra fine. So we'll go ahead and start. We're in the 20 degree angle here. The way you hold this thing, obviously this hand is safe from the blade and this hand, assuming you keep them on top of your stone in those finger grooves, it'll always be perfectly safe. You never have to worry about it. You're gonna apply pressure as you move up and release pressure as you come back down. Okay, you're always pushing the grain of the metal into the metal. You're never scraping it away. Now, I'm gonna take a moment and show you if you look at the very tip of the apex, there's still black Sharpie on it. Okay, that tells us that we haven't ground down all the way to the apex. It's still rounded over there. So that's the reason why I do the Sharpie on there is I wanna watch for when that black disappears all the way to the very edge of the apex. Now, if we look again, you'll see that I removed the Sharpie from the apex of the blade all the way up, except for this portion of the blade right here, because this portion of the blade is the part that does the majority of your cutting tasks. So that's gonna be the part that's gonna be harder to sharpen because that's where it's gonna be the most dull. So when you're sharpening your knife, pay extra careful attention to this portion of the blade right here, from the tip to about maybe three quarters of an inch in. Now you don't have to push hard on this thing. You really want the stones to be doing the majority of the work. And if you push hard, you actually risk changing the angle of your blade by the pressure. So you really just wanna let the stone do the work. And if you find that your stone's not being super productive, you might need to run some oil across this to lift out any debris that might be packed in there. All right, taking a nice close look, we have in fact removed all of the Sharpie there from the edge on this side. So now we're gonna flip over and do the same thing on this side. So now you can see that I've worked up a really nice burr right along the edge of this bevel right here. You can kind of sort of see it there at the very end. It's standing up nice and tall, but it's kind of pushed over to this side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the same extra coarse stone and I'm just lightly going to push that burr right along the edge of this bevel right here. So now I push that burr back over to this side of the bevel. You can see I can catch my fingernail on it really easily. So that is a very, very, tall burr, okay? So we're gonna work on two things now. We're going to knock down the size of that burr and we're gonna polish this edge. You can see this edge is not very shiny at all. So to get all the scratches out of our bevel there, we're gonna step it up now to the regular coarse stone and we're gonna start on the side that has our burr and we're just going to move that burr back over to the other side. So we won't spend very much time on this stone. All right, that pretty much did it. Go over to this side now. All right, I think that's probably going to do it. Yep, so we successfully pushed that burr back over to this side again. And we've taken out some of those really deep scratches left by the extra course. So we're good on that one. We'll go ahead and step it up to our medium. And again, we're starting on the side that has the burr. And just a reminder, I'm only applying force when I'm pushing into the blade. I'm releasing force as I bring it back. That should do it. Yep, I've worked up that burr onto this side. You can always just feel it just by swiping your hand across it. You should be able to feel that burr 
versus the other side should feel nice and smooth. You'll feel your skin catching on this side. All right, and I feel that burr move back over to this side. I'm gonna work on it just a little bit longer only because I really wanna polish out some of those scratches in the bevel. There we go, that's looking better. Ooh, we are getting a much more refined burr now. You'll notice that we're getting shinier on our actual bevel. That's what we want. We want a smaller burr and a finer, smoother bevel. This is the fine stone. Got a nice burr there. Flip it over, do this side. See how foolproof this is? You will not get nearly as consistent results trying to do this yourself on a whetstone, I guarantee it. As you can see, we're getting an even more polished edge and a nice, really fine burr. Now you could stop here, just go straight to your leather strop, which I'll explain a little bit more um, in a little bit. But like I said, I like to have a really mirror polished fine edge. So that's the reason why I have this ultra fine 1000 grit stone. And again, we're gonna start on the side with the burr. All right. And our burr is getting so fine that you can just barely, barely feel that it's there. So now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to very lightly, I mean, just pretty much the weight of the stone. I'm trying to get that teeny tiny microscopic burr to just stand up as tall as possible. I don't want it leaning one way or the other necessarily. Again, just the weight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out of the clamp. Clean up this edge. Now you can really see how mirror polished that bevel is. And look at that, beautiful. Okay, now in addition to any sharpening system, you definitely want a leather strop, okay? This is gonna be the key to taking a mostly shiny edge all the way to a mirror polished edge. And we know that having a mirror polished edge is key to having the smallest burr possible on top of the apex and making sure that it's standing up as straight as possible on top of the apex. And that's what's gonna give us our super hair splitting razor edge. Now a strop can be just about anything. Lots of people use just an old pair of denim jeans and an old leather belt. That's totally awesome if you have that available to you, but this thing I bought for like three or four dollars now. That was before the import sanctions on China, so I think they run like eight to ten dollars. So I'll have a link in the description for this exact strop that I use, but it's awesome that it's canvas on one side and leather on the other. And the way you use this is you just start with the canvas side, and instead of pushing the blade into it like you would when you're sharpening, you're actually going to draw the edge away from it. So lay it down so that it's almost perfectly flat and you'll just drag it along like this. And then back the other direction, just once in each direction. Okay, once you've done about 10 strokes in each direction on the canvas, flip it over to the leather. And we'll do the same thing, about 10 strokes in each direction. And again, what this is doing is that's pulling that burr so that it stands as tall as possible and we are polishing that edge to be a super deluxe mirror finish. There you go, now you can really see that polished mirror finish edge in there. All right, now I'm gonna have to be very careful because I know that this is a very wicked sharp edge. Look at that. Look at all this hair. Gotta be careful, I can take off my top layer of skin really fast. Look at this, razor sharp. So let's say if I was just unboxing a brand new package. Bam, like nothing. Okay. 
cuts through it like butter. Now as easy and as awesome as that just was, the Lansky multi-angle sharpening system actually does have a couple of drawbacks. Okay, one being it's pretty time consuming, right? So if you're in the kitchen and your biggest concern is just getting a ripe tomato sliced, okay, having to clamp up your knife and then running through five different stones from coarse all the way up to fine. It's a long, tedious process. And speaking of kitchen knives, you'll notice that this thing doesn't really lend itself to longer fixed blade knives very well because in order to maintain a consistent angle of bevel, you'll actually need to sharpen half of the knife and then move your clamp and then sharpen the other half of the knife, effectively doubling your time spent sharpening. And you just don't wanna do that when you're just trying to get dinner cooked, right? And now while the system is great for getting your initial bevel profiled to the exact degree angle that you want, this system right here lends itself a little bit better to longer fixed blade knives. It is a little bit cheaper and it works great for kitchen knives. So if you wanna see how to use this one, go ahead and click on that video right up there and don't forget my playlist of videos on my top three best budget knife sharpening systems. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars and I'll see you in that next video.